Veil of Thoughts by Starwin, Chapter 6, Zisrepta Sea. Dash was dreaming. She knew this was a dream. It was as plain as the muzzle on her face that this couldn't be real. It was that special kind of dream where she was both asleep and awake at the same time. She knew this was a dream because she was falling. Clouds raced past her as she tumbled through the sky. Her wings flapped uselessly at her sides, only throwing her off balance more. The wind screamed in her ears. The ground was reaching up to grab her. Dash didn't like the feeling of falling, of not being in control. Crashing wasn't at all like falling. She crashed all the time while she didn't enjoy crashing. At least it was her who was doing it. Falling was completely out of her control. She tried to flap her wings again. That won't do you any good, you know, said a voice from above her. Dash tilted her eyes upward. A small lavender ball was racing down beside her. The ball accelerated so that it was level with Dash. It was then she realized that it wasn't a ball at all, but a filly. The filly who looked at exactly like her. No, not like her. Why had she thought that? The filly didn't have wings, although her own wings seemed to be doing a little good at the moment. There was a horn on the filly's head, and her mane color was all wrong. Why won't it do any good? asked Dash, her wings still trying to halt her Brown. downwards plummet. Because you don't know how to fly, answered the filly that wasn't like her at all. You only think you know how to fly. Dash opened her mouth to argue, to tell the filly that she was the best darn flyer in all of Equestria. However, her chance to say any of that was lost as she slammed full force into the ground. A plume of dust towered into the sky from Im the impact, hovering high above like a dirty brown cloud for a brief moment before fading. Standing up from her crash, Dash brushed herself off casually, as if the million hoof fall had been simply a little trip. She was completely uninjured. No broken bones, no cuts or bruises, not even a sprained hoof. It wasn't her best landing, but she'd had worse. Her eyes turned upwards towards looking into the sky. A bright moon glowed high overhead. It was casting down enough light that it hardly seemed like nighttime at all. For one crazy moment, she considered where she had fallen from. The moon seemed like a, a likely answer. I suppose that might be possible, said a voice. Dash brought her attention back to the ground. The filly hovered in front of Dash, her horn glowing, keeping her aloft. The magic stopped and the filly dropped gently to the ground, landing much more gracefully. Does it really matter where you fell from? Dash looked skyward again. She supposed it didn't. Where am I anyhow? Asked Dash, looking around at the barren emptiness of the world. She didn't recognize this flat, featureless place at all. A uh, Ponyville, obviously, replied the filly. Dash gave her a quizzical look. You remember Ponyville a lot different than me, replied Dash, slightly irritated. She held out a hoof in the empty air. If this is Ponyville, where are all the buildings? Where are all the ponies? No sooner had Dash proclaimed this than buildings began to spring out of the ground like fast-growing weeds. In seconds, the pair was surrounded by a town on all sides. They were both silent for a moment. I said, where are all the ponies? Dash repeated. No ponies appeared. She looked at the filly who shrugged again. I don't know. They're your responsibility, not mine, said the filly. Dash raised an eyebrow at the strange little pony. Her coat was lavender. Her mane and tail were dark purple with a highlighted pink stripe running through them. Hey, said Dash, pointing a hoof at the small mare. You look familiar. Do I know you somewhere? The filly shrugged. Dash shook her head in confusion. This was getting her nowhere. If she was going to figure things out, she would just have to set out on her own and... A sharp pain suddenly lanced through Dash's chest. It was like nothing she had ever felt before. Above her, the sky flickered. For a moment, there were other shapes, not the moon and stars. She could hear words whispered in her ears like distant shouts. Heartbeat is erratic. Pony is non-responsive. It was silent once again. The stars and moon had returned overhead. She was back in nighttime Ponyville. Dash found herself on the ground, curled in a protective ball. She lay there, shivering in the dirt trying to comprehend what had happened. 
What? What was that? Asked Dash, her voice quivering just as much as her body. That's not important, said the filly. She walked over to look down at Dash. They stared at each other for a long moment. The pain had gone. The strange world and sounds had faded away like they had never been. Lying on the ground wasn't going to give her any answers. Dash worked her way back to her feet. Who are you? D- asked Dash, eyeing the small lavender filly up and down. If I even told you, you wouldn't believe me. You couldn't, said the filly, giving Dash the same up and down glance. It's not your responsibility. Do you think you could, uh, make a little more sense? Asked Dash. So far you haven't answered any of the questions I've asked you. That's because your questions aren't important, said the filly. Dash felt a little tick of rage over her eye. What? asked Dash. What's important is that you are here, said the filly matter-of-factly. That I'm here? asked Dash, working to keep her growing frustration in check. Why is that important? It's just Ponyville. No, that you're here, said the filly. Dash had just about enough of this filly and her nonsense. You are here for that, said the filly raised her small hoof and pointed past Dash to something behind her. Cautiously, as if it were the last thing she wanted to do, Dash turned around. A giant monster, a dragon, even Prince Celestia would have been closer to what Dash thought might be waiting for her eyes. However, it was none of those things. It wasn't even close. This was nothing special. This was nothing important. A town library? Asked Dash, a confused expression on her face. She looked back towards the filly. I don't get it. Why should I care about that place? It's for eggheads. Dash didn't like something about this place. It made her feel strange. This building didn't belong here. It wasn't right. Dash took a step away. She was afraid of this building. There is something you're trying to remember, said the filly quietly. Dash's eyes turned down to the filly. Something is just out of reach. Something you would know inside you. With every fiber of your being, but that you choose to forget. Dash took another step away from the buildings. She didn't want to be anywhere near this place. She turned away, but the filly was levitating, hovering only inches from Dash's face, blocking her escape. When you go through that door, you will confront what you've forgotten, continued the filly. You will find the most important thing in the world. It will change you. It will make you whole. But only if you accept it. You want to know... That's why you're here. If you didn't want to know, then you would have stayed right where you were. You must go inside. No! Dash shouted definitely. I don't like that place. I don't like this place. I want to leave. I want to go home. The pain came, just like it did before, sharp and pointed in her chest. She gasped for breath. For a moment, just a moment, there were ponies standing over her, faces she didn't recognize or she didn't understand. Then she was back in Ponyville, back on the ground with the filly, the only one over her once again. What was that? cried Dash, her voice on the edge of hysteria. That's not important, said the filly, looking up at the moon high above, as if she could see the ponies that Dash had seen. If you stay like you are, it won't matter what it is. Why won't you make any sense? shouted Dash angrily. Just tell me what the darn house is so important. Tell me why you're here. Tell me what's going on. No, replied the filly simply. Dash was not prepared for that answer. It had been so blunt and direct. Up until that point, every answer that had been incomprehensible. If I tell you, then it means nothing. Fire is hot. Pain hurts. The grass is soft. I cannot tell you what you must know, but that you don't have to understand. What you must see with your own eyes, but not with sight. What you must feel, but not with touch. Some things no one can tell you, no matter how many times they say it. The filly moved away, and the treehouse library was once more before Dash. I'm afraid of what's in there, said Dash. She put her hooves over her head, like a scared little foal. 
I'm afraid that it'll hurt me. I know, said the villi calmly. And we are afraid too, for you. And if you don't like what you find, then all this has been for nothing. Dash did not get up. She was so afraid. Why was she so afraid of that house? What was in there that made her this way? Not books. Those were boring, but they weren't scary. Well, some were, but books weren't scary. They were just books. Please, said the filly, looking down at Dash sadly. You have to. We're depending on you. We can't do this alone, not without your help. Dash suddenly felt something inside her. She didn't know what it was at first. She just knew that she had to do this. She had to do it for the filly. It was the strangest, craziest things she had ever felt. This nonsense-speaking filly, whose name she didn't even know. Dash had to do this for her. She didn't know why, but she had to. This feeling was so strong, so powerful. She could only describe the feeling as... Loyalty. Sparkle, said the filly, interrupting Dash's thoughts. That's my name. Okay, Sparkle, said Dash, forcing herself to her feet. I'm not afraid. The loyalty filled Dash with a newfound strength. Her fear evaporated. She was not afraid of anything, and certainly not books. She charged the door. Her hoof took hold, and with one quick motion, she shoved it open. Blinding light poured through the doorway, bright and golden. She had to close her eyes against it. It was warm and strong. The light made her feel safe. Why had she been afraid of this place? Her eyes adjusted, and Dash got the first glimpse of what was beyond the door. The other side was not the library. For a moment, Dash wasn't sure what she was looking at. She glanced behind her, then back through the door. It was another Ponyville, just like the one she saw was in now, except not quite right. Everything was flipped around, like it was a reflection. And instead of being nighttime, it was bright and sunny on the other side. So, this is what you wanted me to see? asked Dash uncertainly. There had been no big revelation, no moment of clarity, just Ponyville, except with more light. No, said Sparkle with a shake of her head. That is where she is waiting for you. Where? She? What? Who? asked Dash. There was a moan from the Sunshine Ponyville, and a moment later a mare stumbled out from behind the door. She must have been standing on the other side when Dash had flung it open, and it had crashed into her. Dash blinked, not really sure what she was seeing. She looked back at the Sparkle, then back to the mare standing in front of her. They were the same, except the one in Sunshine Ponyville was much taller. What was even stranger was that Big Sparkle had a little filly with her too, standing right next to her. This filly was sky blue, and her hair was a rainbow of colors. Dash couldn't look away from the filly. That couldn't be. It wasn't. Dash shook her head. Who are you? asked Dash, her attention returning to the lavender mare. Twilight, said the mare. And you must be Dash? Dash nodded. In this, Twilight held out her hoof with a small filly beside her. Is Rainbow. The filly waved, uncertainly Dash waved back. A sudden pain pulsed in Dash's chest again. It was a stabbing reminder of something she couldn't wrap her hoofs around. It didn't knock her to the ground this time, but took all the effort to remain upright. The world flickered around her, no around them, because Twilight was still there too. For a third time, they were someplace else. Someplace not night or day Ponyville. Someplace white. The voices were still there, and they couldn't make, couldn't make out words. Something's wrong. We're losing them. The sunshine Ponyville snapped back into place. Did you feel? Did you see that? Dash asked. Twilight nodded. She seemed to be unable to speak. But how? What is it? It's our pain, said Twilight, still holding her head. For all we have lost. For f the friends we can't remember. Friends? said Dash. The world felt funny on her tongue. You need to hurry, said the filly Sparkle. She was looking around her, her large purple eyes starting back and forth as she could see invisible swarms of insects approaching from all directions. 
Yes, I am well aware of that, said Twilight. Dash, do you remember anything before now? Dash opened her mouth, then closed it. She thought for a long moment. What did she remember? I remember a ceiling, said Dash at last. The rest of it? I remember it, but it doesn't make any sense. Because you only have parts of it, said Twilight. Because what you're trying to remember is half of a memory. And what you're missing, what we're missing, is the most important part. The thing that ties all our memories together. The, word shook, the world shook around them. Part of the sky, high, above, cracked and broke. Dash looked up in panic. How did the sky have a crack in it? Friends, said Twilight, returning Dash's attention to her. Okay, so... What? asked Dash. It's not just about memories, said Twilight. It's everything. Our friends are part of who we are. Without them, we are incomplete and lost. You have been struggling and resisting, telling yourself they don't matter because you can't remember them. You've been telling yourself that you don't need to remember them. But it, it isn't true. I need them. We need them. It's the one thing we can't agree on. The one thing holding us back. I don't remember having friends, said Dash, taking a step away. I don't need friends. All the friends I've ever had left me. Why would I want friends? Dash, said Twilight, saw it sadly. That isn't true. If it isn't true, then why can't I remember any of them? Shouted Dash. Not their faces, not their names, nothing. It hurts when I try, it's empty when I look. I don't have fr any friends. The whole world shook around them, and the sunny sky above the clouds contracted slightly, circling the sun. However, the clouds did not hide the growing crack that had now stretched across the blue dome above. The ground beneath their hooves spider webbed it with hundreds of tiny cracks. Twilight took a step back. What's happening to me? Dash continued to shout, not even noticing what was going on around them. Why do I feel this way? What is this place? Who are you? You don't know said Twilight, her eyes widening in surprise. I thought... thought you would have realized by now. I thought you knew. Knew what? cried Dash angrily. What am I supposed to knew? I mean, no. Why can't any of you just give me a straight answer? Dash, said Twilight, her eyes shifting uncomfortably as she chose her words carefully. It seemed like whatever she was about to say was really important and also very difficult to, at the same time. Something happened to us. Something that's my fault. No! shouted Dip Rainbow. She raced to Twilight and tried to push her away from Dash. Despite putting all her effort into the push, Twilight remained right where she was. Rainbow's back hooves slid along the ground, leaving gorges in the dirt. Her small wings flapped as hard as they could, but all her effort didn't move Twilight even an inch. You can't tell her that! Don't tell her that! Twilight looked at the filly with concern. You know too, don't you? shouted Dash, looking down at Rainbow. Twilight has to say it, said Sparkle. Dash needs to know this. She can't deny it any longer. There isn't time anymore. I need to tell you that we... Ugh, said Twilight. Her words cut off as Rainbow shoved a hoof in her mouth. Hey! shouted Sparkle, trotting up next to Rainbow. The small lavender filly glared at the sky blue. One angrily. You stop that right now! No, said Rainbow with a shake of her head. Twilight is just being a silly filly. Dash doesn't need to hear anything she has to say. You should just go back to your nighttime pony and lock that door up tight. I'm not leaving until I hear what she has to tell me. Shouted Dash. The world shook again. The cracks spread wider beneath their hooves. Through the cracks in the ground, it was inky darkness. Twilight finally managed to pull free of Rainbow's hoof. She stuck out her tongue, her face screwed up in a look of slight nausea. What, what I was trying to say, repeated Twilight. The filly tried again to stop her. This time, shouting nonsense over her words, Twilight raised her hoof. Have to... you... thing important... What? shouted Dash, being barely able to make out the words between the shouts. We aren't two ponies anymore, yelled Twilight. We're the same pony. What? shouted Dash in shock. 
I said we're the same pony, Twilight repeated, still yelling. But she needn't have bothered. Mirabel had suddenly gone silent. In fact, both fillies seemed to have gone entirely. The two mares stood in the sunshine ponyville. The hair had gone still. The ground had stopped shaking. Everything was oddly calm. I'm sorry, said Twilight. Her voice seemed slightly muffled now. It's my fault. I did this to us. Dash didn't answer. She was looking at the cracked ground, her pink eyes wide with confusion. Dash, you have to listen to me, said Twilight. We share the same body, but we aren't sharing our mind. Our mind is fighting over our friends, trying to share my memories with you, but you won't accept them. Dash looked away uncomfortably. I'm sorry, Dash. I didn't want it to be like this. Dash. Twilight looked at the sky blue Pegasus standing in front of her. I need you to. You have to. Trust me. Why should I do that? asked Dash harshly. Because if you do, our friends are going to try and put us back the way we used to be.